So the magnification over here is given as the ratio of angle subtended by the image to the angle subtended by the object. This is the equation for normal vision and this is the equation for the distinct vision and negative sign of view because the image is said to be inverted. Concrete means the inner part of it is completely shaded whereas the exterior part is said to be the one which is available for reflection. Hello everyone, I am Rinda, Faculty of Physics from Vidyashram Pre University College, Mysuru, welcoming you all to Session 8, Chapter 9 and Chapter name is Ray Optics and Optical Instruments. In today's class, we are just dealing with last bit of the Chapter 9, Ray Optics and Optical Instruments and that is nothing but the telescopes and microscopes what we discuss. Simple microscope is the instrument which is used to observe the large images of a smaller object, okay? So this is used only to identify the tiny particles, okay? It's tiny particles is observed, it is kept here and through the lens it is observed so that we get a magnifying and a clear image of it. That is why it is called as a magnifying lens. So how exactly the lens acts over here? So always we use convex lens. Lens what we use in case of microscopes and telescopes is said to be a convex lens. So there is a convex lens which is present over here. Okay, we use biconvex lens and as you all know according to the rules it is the principal axis which is passing over here and this is said to be the optic center. Okay, so it has two focal length, one is F here and another one is F over here, call this as F1 and F2, two focal lengths are over here. Okay, so now it's our duty is to place an image. So the image is placed between the optic center and the principal focus. So what is the, according to the rules, how is the ray formed? Any ray which is passing parallel to the principal axis, it has to meet at principal focus okay that is one set for an image to be formed you have to have two lines which intersects each other so one line one ray diagram you have done the second ray diagram for this simple microscope is any line which is passing through the center has to move ahead so can you feel that these two will meet at certain point no, because there is certain deviation, that deviation is giving the parallel combination of these two lines because of that it is throughout infinity, it is parallel itself. But the alternate of this is we have to see the other side of the line. Can you at least extend these lines such that in order to check whether these two lines meet? Yes, it meets over here. So here is the head and here is the tail. So this is the tail. So you have A, B as the object. So image formed is A dash and B dash. So this is how exactly the image is formed and the formed image is said to be the erect and virtual image. This is not the real image which is formed. This is a virtual but it is not inverted. It is erect image. This is how exactly the simple microscope identifies the object which is placed here below the lens. That is the biconvex lens what we observe. Clear with that? So that is all about your simple microscope and the observation is done. That is your eye is placed over here. Okay. So this is your presence of eye. By this you are observing your image which is erect. The image formed, you can just give the image formed is virtual and erect. Okay, so you have to give a magnification for this. So what is meant by a magnification? So the magnification over here is given as the ratio of angle subtended by the image to the angle subtended by the object. So the magnification is determined in terms of M and according to certain set of derivation wherein here the derivation is not mentioned. Your duty is to study the simple microscope, its ray diagram, how exactly the image is formed for an object. Then you will have to know what is meant by magnification as well as you have to write down the equation. That's all is given for you. Okay. So here you have M is equal to 1 minus V divided by F 
V is nothing but the distance of the vision. So that a distance is said to be D. So I can just write it as M is equal to 1 and minus V. V means it's an image. Image is formed in the negative side of the lens. So negative of negative will be positive D by F. So this is how exactly you give the magnification for the simple microscope. Suppose this is at the distinct vision, okay? This magnification is at distinct, distinct vision. So suppose if you're just checking on to the normal vision, normal vision you have M is equal to D divided by F. So that is all about the magnification expression, which is noted as important concept that is knowing the magnification expression. So having all this, let us move to the next topic and that is the compound microscope. We have studied about simple microscope. Now we are getting on to the compound microscope. So what exactly is a compound microscope? So the microscope which is used in your laboratories, biology laboratories are said to be the compound microscope. Why exactly this is used? Because it is used to magnify the tinier, tinier images, the very, very, very tiny particles it is used to observe, okay? And then it gives the inverted image of an object. Clear with that? So now you have got your compound microscope as you can see over here. This is the instrument. So compound microscope is also having the magnifying lens. This is also the one which is having magnifying lens which magnifies the object which is present over there. And that object is compared to be very, very, very tiny particles. Clear with that? So now you have the image formation. But in case of compound microscope, we have set of points that is it uses two convex lens. One is large and another one is small. Okay, so you have a smaller convex lens over here first and then it has got bigger convex lens and then there is a principal axis which passes over here. Okay, so there is optic center O and optic center called this as O. So now, how is the image formed? So there is an image which is formed called this has got a focus of F0 and this has got F0 because this is called as an objective lens. The first lens is called, the one which is small is called as an objective lens. And the one which is large, that is a bigger one, is called as an eyepiece or eye lens. Okay, we have objective lens as eye lens. And objective lens focal length has to be, principal focus has to be F0 and F0. Wherein in case of eye lens, this is the eye lens. So eye lens has to have the focal length of Fe and Fe. This is the principal focus. So any ray passing from this object parallelly has to cross over the focus. That is the first focus, principal focus of the objective lens. And then it has to pass through the center undeviated. So you get your image somewhere over here. So call this as A and B and you get the inverted image of it. Call this as A dash and B dash. Now you have again other set of lens which is present over there in order to observe the object's image. So when that is the case, you will have to pass over the, that is from the head there is a light which is passing. Remember, arrow mark is must and should. Okay. So, any line which is parallel to this has to move through the focus. Okay. That is the principal focus of the eye piece or the eye lens. And any ray of light which is passing through the optic center should move undeviated. So, there we have parallel rays so that it never meets each other. So what is the contrary of that? We have to check whether it meets in the other side. So we have to just give the extension of a line so that where it meets. So you have the image formed over here. So call this as A double dash and B double dash. So these two are the second image which is formed because of the second lens call it as I lens or the eyepiece. So this is how exactly the image formation is done over here. So you get the object is small, 
you get the larger image which is inverted okay so we get a inverted image so in order to check the magnification over here magnification means it is defined as ratio of angles subtended by the image to the angles subtended by the object that is the definition for the magnification so here the magnification at distinct vision we have m is equal to l divided by minus f naught okay so here this is this is considered to be f naught these length is said to be the f naughts and here it is the distance is said to be f e okay because that is the focal length of the objective lens and focal length of the eye lens so we have m is equal to l divided by minus f naught so what this becomes is into 1 plus d divided by f e so this is at distinct vision and at normal vision we have m is equal to just write l divided by minus f naught and for normal vision we have d divided by f e so this is the equation for normal vision and this is the equation for the distinct vision and negative sign it because the image is said to be inverted so that is all about your compound microscope what you have to study and next we are going on to the telescope and that is nothing but the astronomical telescope you might have seen while looking at the eclipses and all all these such kind of a telescope are used okay so this is the astronomical telescope which is used only for the heavenly bodies like stars sun planets etc okay so how exactly the astronomical telescope is that is through the astronomical telescope the heavenly body is observed let us get into this astronomical telescope astronomical telescope you have got two lens one is two are also called as biconvex lens one is said to be larger and one is said to be smaller so in case of that you will have to draw one larger one as called as objective lens and the smaller one called as eye lens so both are having the principal axis which is split into half and that is called as the optic center which is present over here any ray of light which is passing parallel to this optic center which is incident will have to meet at certain point okay so this passes undeviated this deviates itself and passes so this is a small image which has formed of the heavenly bodies whatever you observe and the ray of light which is passing from this light moves to the focus and again this also through the optic center so it has got the extension over here the image is formed at infinity and this is observed by this area this is the image which is formed at infinity where in case of the uh, normal that is image formed at a near point you have got your uh, objective lens over here and eye lens which is near so that the focal length of objective lens is here it is merged that is the distance between them is shortened so any ray of light which is passing through the optic center right here it just have to take the deviation in this manner okay so the all image is formed over here though any ray of light passing from the image what is formed so call this as a and this as b moves to the principal focus and then any ray of light which is passing through the optic center will have to pass this is the optic center and this is the optic center over here so if you just join these lines in a dotted version you get an image what is formed over here so call this as a double dash and b double dash this is how exactly the image is formed at near point that is the one where exactly the image is formed at the far point that is infinity so the observation is done through this side okay this part that is all about your astronomical telescope for astronomical telescope you have the magnification given for two of the things that is at near point and then next is at the far point okay near point is nothing but the this one the below one and the at infinity the image is formed as the above one so for the above one it is given by m is equal to f naught minus f e this is how the magnification is given for the infinite the image formed at infinity and the in image formed at the near point for that it is given as 
m is equal to f naught minus f e okay into 1 minus f e divided by d. So that is the equation for your image formed at a near point. So now we have just got the last one that is the reflecting telescope and that is called as Cassegrain telescope okay. So you have seen this kind of telescope as well which is used to observe the images okay. For this we use the mirrors. This is a different types of telescopes which use the mirrors Cassegrain telescope. Here we have got a concave mirror which is having a part called as eyepiece okay. So this is called as a eyepiece. Concave mirror is shaded at the curved part because the reflecting part is the inside one, okay. And then we have something called as a convex. Convex means the inner part of it is completely shaded whereas the exterior part is said to be the one which is available for reflection. So here we will have to just draw the telescope in this manner. So whichever ray of light which is passing, so when we observe what happens, Remember students, this is the IP. So the incident ray has to be from other other way. So any ray which is incident parallelly like this, okay, any rays which is incidentally parallel from the object, what happens to it? It has to come and pitch over the reflecting surface. And the reflecting surface, what we are using here is nothing but the convex mirror okay we are using the convex mirror so the primary mirror is said to be the concave mirror what we are using and this is called as the secondary convex mirror okay here we use the mirrors okay then finally what happens again the reflection takes place from this mirror and the reflection turns out to be in this manner so this is visualized by the eye that is how the reflecting type of telescope so here completely reflection is taken place just because of the mirror what we use by the heading only that is reflecting means we have to use mirror for this telescope so that is all about your reflecting telescope and the magnification what we use here is it is also called as either magnification or magnifying power in all the cases okay so either it can be magnification or magnifying telescopes or magnifying power of telescopes or microscopes or anything it can be given as as I have just taught you in simple microscope compound microscope astronomical telescope. Now I'm just teaching on with the reflecting telescope. So it has to go like M is equal to F naught by F E. So F naught is nothing but your R divided by 2 divided by F E. So you can just write M is equal to 2 R divided by 2 times the F E. So that is all about your magnification of this reflecting or Cassegrain type of telescope. So in today's class, we have studied about the telescopes and microscopes coming from the starting that is a simple microscope we have studied what why exactly it is used and its ray diagram with its magnifying power similarly go on to the compound microscope and astronomical telescope as well as reflecting or Cassegrain type of telescope so that's all about your chapter 9 ray optics and optical instruments here ends your chapter and next we are just dealing on with the upcoming chapters and until then have a good day thank you